Here's a walkthrough of the day two procedure for the nail lab for the reaction of iron with uh, copper two chloride. What you will notice after your reaction beaker has uh, allowed, been allowed to react for an entire day is that the solution has gone from being kind of that bright blue copper chloride color to kind of a yellowish green. That indicates that the copper that was dissolved in the solution as copper two ions has now come out of the solution as solid copper and we see a good bit of reddish brown metallic copper that has formed on the surface of the nails. Today's procedure is all about collecting that copper and measuring its mass. So we want to collect it, we want to clean it, um, and see how that mass compares to what our stoichiometric calculations um, seem to be. We can also make a prediction about how much iron should be left in the nails, and that's kind of a secondary objective of this day's procedure. So the procedure says to take the nails and kind of um, shake off the copper. So again, there's this kind of fuzzy copper that has formed. And you can see there's quite a bit there. I want that copper to stay in the beaker. And that's one of the reasons why I use two nails for this investigation because you can kind of use them to just push that copper off down into the beaker. You'll also notice that the surface of the nails looks different and it actually is thinner um, because again, while the copper forms, you also have metallic iron being converted to ionic plus two iron ions and they get dissolved in the solution. So I wanna to try to rinse any of that copper down into the beaker that may have been clinging to the nails. And you can also use one of these plastic scrapers to try to get that down into the beaker. And if you have any that's on that scraper, you can rinse that down as well. Once you feel like you have the copper removed from the nails, you're just gonna place them in another beaker. If you have a 150 uh, milliliter beaker, that's a good fit. I'll place those there. So next up, those are going to be dried. I would like to know the mass of iron that's left. So those are gonna go to the drying oven and I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. So this is the drying oven. It should be turned on by the time that you are uh, doing the investigation and it'll be warm inside. Uh, there will probably be other beakers inside already drying and you can just place your iron nails inside of that drying oven. Our goal for the next part of the investigation is to collect and clean the copper. We're gonna use a lab technique called decanting. Um, so the procedure says that we're gonna decant the liquid, which means to pour off the liquid on the top and rinse the copper a few times to try to clean it and rinse off any dissolved iron chloride that might be clinging to the copper. So to decant, you're gonna to wanna to pick a beaker, just a waste beaker to collect uh, the liquid that you're pouring off. And it helps to hold a stirring rod across the, um, the beaker. And that just helps as you pour, maybe stopping any solid particles that might be otherwise pouring out of the spout of the beaker. So you wanna kind of hold it like that. And you wanna pour slowly. And the stirring rod can also just help direct some of that liquid. Now I'm gonna lose some copper at this step. I'm gonna try not to, but chances are you may see some fine particles of copper pour out of the beaker. And the idea is I wanna pour a good amount off in that first step, but I don't want to pour it so rapidly that I lose a bunch of the copper that formed. So I have a good deal of copper in here 
and I want to clean it over the next couple of steps. So it says don't pour off the last bit of solution and uh, we want to add about 25 milliliters of distilled water to again clean off the copper so it doesn't need to be exact there is a marking for 20 milliliters on here but I'm basically trying to clean and rinse that copper Swirl it a little bit. And then you want to let the copper settle. So wait a minute or two, and then you can repeat the decanting process. You should complete three cycles of decanting, rinsing, and decanting again. Once you've gone through that process three times, your copper should look fairly clean, reddish brown like we expect copper to look. Then we're going to take this over to the drying oven. At this point, the iron nails should be fairly dry. I'm going to go ahead and remove those from the drying oven. And I do want to make sure that I use beaker tongs because it will be hot. Hopefully you've labeled your beaker so you know which one is yours. There will be other people's beakers in the drying oven. And then we want to dry the copper as well. We want to measure the copper's mass, but we don't want any water to um, add to that mass. So you can either put those on top or on the bottom level, depending on where there's room in the drying oven. Then we can take a look at our um, iron nails and see how much mass is left on those. So one note from the previous step, you're gonna have some waste solution in your beaker that you've decanted. That should go in the class waste beaker. and then that beaker can be uh, cleaned and dried and put back in your lab drawer. We wanna give some time for the nails to, uh, to cool off. Now you can test to see if your beaker's hot by bringing the back of your hand towards the beaker. I can feel that it is still pretty warm, so I'm gonna actually remove the nails with um, some tongs. And what we can see here, bring it up a little bit closer. There we go. Is that the nails have clearly been kind of eroded and eaten away. Um, there's a little bit of rusty looking, maybe iron oxide or maybe even some copper that's clinging there. But we want to get a measurement of the mass of those nails and see how that matches our stoichiometric calculations. So uh, that would be a next step. For the nail measurement, I prefer not to put the nails directly on the pan for the balance. So I'm going to go ahead and zero it with a weighing dish on the scale. The nails are cool at this point. I can go ahead and put them in to weigh their mass. So I can get the mass of the nails. I'm gonna go ahead and jot down that number. It's 12.269. Yesterday, the mass of the nails to start was 14.294 grams. It has decreased because some of that has been converted into the iron chloride product. So we can check that value, the 12.269 grams against our BCA chart and stoichiometric calculations and see how close we are to the prediction. So I went over to the drying oven and pulled out my beaker of copper. 
and I can see that there's still some water clinging inside to the copper. So I'm going to decant that little bit of water and I'm also going to try to spread out the copper a little bit so that um, it can that water that's still clinging to it can evaporate a little bit easier. So I can take my uh, plastic scoop and just kind of move apart the pieces of copper. so that they're a little bit more exposed to the heat of the oven to continue drying. It's gonna go back into the drying oven. So the copper beaker has been in the oven for a while. Um, and if I look at it, get it focused there. Um, it still looks like it could be a little bit wet. And what I tend to do is take your spatula and just kind of break up the pieces um, and see how dry it looks when you do that. So let's see how that looks. So when I look in here, I think it still looks like there's some moisture there. So we'll try to get it as dry as we can during the second day. Um, but there's a good possibility that it might just need to air dry a bit overnight. So um, at this point, you know, if it's getting close to the end of the period and it still looks like you have some uh, moisture in there, I would go ahead and get a mass measurement just so you have it. And then you can compare that mass measurement um, after a day or an evening of air drying as well. So I'm going to go ahead and get that value. I'll zero my balance. and I'll put the entire beaker on the balance. And I'm seeing a value of 56.876. So quick correction, <laughs> what I just measured was the mass of copper in the beaker, um, 56.876 grams. Uh, you should have measured the empty beaker mass on day one, so 51.568 grams. So I can figure out how much copper is in there just by subtracting out that empty beaker mass from the 56.876 grams. Now I'm expecting actually for some additional drying to occur overnight. And so I would adjust that value accordingly on day three. I've allowed for some additional drying time for the copper product. And I've, I've noticed that it does look uh, quite dry now. So it uh, is kind of powdery and um, it doesn't you know, have any much appearance of being uh, damp or wet anymore. And you can always heat it for an additional amount of time if you're unsure, but if the appearance looks something like this, um, you're in uh, pretty good shape. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the mass and then I will know how much copper was actually produced. like 53.871 grams. So it was up above 56 grams before. You can see that the water can add quite a bit of mass. Very important that it looks dry and appears dry um, to get an accurate measurement there. So that may require some overnight drying or it may just require some additional time in the drying oven. From here again, we can take that, that value of copper plus beaker, subtract out the beaker mass to know how many grams of copper was produced. We can check that against what was predicted from the BCHR.